Good afternoon. I'm Wayne Boucher. Everyone calls me TJ. Um, today we're going to talk about criminal street games, uh, most notably the gangster disciples, the Crips and the Bloods. <clears throat> so the, the purpose of discussing um, criminal street games, the, the first part of them is for, for us in law enforcement, we focus on criminal street gangs for the purposes of intelligence gathering, um, for officer safety. Um, we look for these reasons for uh, legal prosecution reasons, civil remedies, but most notably uh, for our enforcement actions and officer safety. Um, when it comes to uh, criminal street gangs, there's several several things that you have to know about. First, what makes a criminal street gang a street gang? Uh, what makes that member a gang member? Um, well, South Carolina does a good job and they help us out on understanding these things and uh, by that they give us definitions. Uh, a gang member, uh, the definition of a gang member varies depending on state and depending as far as federal definition and state definition. Well, since we're here in South Carolina, we'll go ahead and discuss what a gang is as far as South Carolina law goes. So a gang member is simply an individual who is an active member of a criminal gang. Um, well, first, to be able to have that member, you gotta know what is a, what is a criminal street gang then. Well, South Carolina defines a criminal street gang as a formal or informal ongoing organization, association, a group that consists of five or more persons who form in the purpose of committing criminal activity and who knowingly and actively participates in a pattern of criminal gang activity. Well, that's, that's kind of more broad. First one's a little more uh, vague. This one's more, this one's more uh, descript. So, now you have to have, to make a game, you gotta have five or more. And they gotta come together for the purposes of committing crimes as a pattern of criminal gang activity. Well, what is a criminal gang, pattern of criminal gang activity? A pattern of criminal gang activity is crimes such as violent crimes. South Carolina defines them as violent crimes. There's drug crimes, there's property crimes, there's financial crimes. All these crimes that people do together for the purpose of furthering that gang or that gang member. So throughout history, there's been many gangs. Um, there's still many gangs today. There's more than I would believe there ever was due to the fact that we have so many hybrid gangs, which is a whole other topic, uh, neighborhood gangs. But the three major ones, the gangster disciples, the bloods and the crips is what we're gonna discuss. Why do we want to discuss that? We want to have a base understanding of the history of these gangs to help us in our enforcement efforts, our investigative efforts, um, our officer safety efforts, um, to know how to deal with these individuals and these gangs. So the first one are the gangster disciples. Uh, the base history with the gangster disciples helps us know where they are now. Where, what, what the gang is going to be doing now because they still, for the most part, operate based on Larry Hoover's word. They operate under his knowledge. Uh, what he tells them is true. So the, the gangster disciples were formed by David Barksdale and Larry Hoover. Um, well, David Barksdale and Larry Hoover both moved to Chicago at a young age from Mississippi. Well, and that was in 1968. They combined it, their forces um, of David Barksdale's Black Disciples and Larry Hoover's Supreme Gangsters to form the Black Gangster Disciple Nation. So the reason these individuals came together and formed the Gangster Disciples is back in 1968 in the 70s, um, in Chicago, there was the Black Panther Party. Well, the Black Panther Party was um, causing issues for law enforcement in the community of Chicago, so law enforcement was doing mass arrests. They were 
they were trying their best to combat the Black Panther Party the best way they knew how. So sometimes people who weren't Black Panther Party members were wrapped up in some of these mass arrests and mass police activities. So the gangster disciples were then formed to help combat against the police actions against the Black Panther Party. Well, they soon, not only did they uh, just form for their protection against law enforcement per se, uh, they, they moved into the sale of drugs and that era of crack cocaine became a large, large drug and an easy way to make money and to further that gang. Well, the gang decided that they, they failed to violence, they failed to, to drug sales, uh, which carries through to today. Uh, still to this day, there's multiple acts of violence uh, that's committed by these members of the Gangster Disciples, even on a local level here, such as in Anderson. Um, there's numerous drug sales. These individuals sell drugs uh, to help further their, their gang, their criminal organization. They steal to help further their criminal organization. Um, which leads into the Crips. So the Crips is a little different. Uh, the, the history of these Crips um, are a little, little unknown, per se. Uh, the most there's several different variations of how the Crips came to be. Um, so the, the most notable one is that Stanley Williams, aka Tookie, and Raymond Washington formed the Crips in 1971 for their own protection. Protection from what you say. Protection from other gangs in Los Angeles, California. Most people, when you think gang, you think Los Angeles, you think Chicago, you think New York. Well, these big cities, these are where some, but most, gangs have formed. Um, so you have the protection against other gangs. So these individuals in the neighborhood decided, well, you know, these guys are beating us up. They're, they're taking our money. They're, we're not having money. They're beating us up. They're stealing our stuff. We're done with that. So they decide they're going to create the Crips. Well, they were said to have created it to help their community, but then resorted to violence. Well, to be number one, to be the top gang, you've got to be violent, apparently. So therefore, they became violent. Shootings, stabbings, robberies. Um, to make money, they sold drugs. Well, Crack cocaine, once again, very large thing in the 70s. So therefore, they sold drugs, specifically crack cocaine for the most part, to make money to further their game. Still to this day, this history, they are, they are still to this day committing violent acts to stay the strongest game. Uh, they're selling drugs to stay the most renowned gang, you want to say. Uh, they, they're selling these drugs they're, to make money to help further their gang, their criminal organization. So when these individuals go to jail, that money from the drug proceeds that they get, they help bond each other out. A few little things here. So this individual's holding up a C right here. Uh, the C is for Crip. Um, you have individuals over here, a local picture here, um, throwing up Cs. Blood killer. Just a little quick picture snippet there. Now the next, and the Bloods. Um, Bloods were founded early 1970s for guess what? The protection of the Crips from the Crips. Um, they were formed in Compton, California. Uh, they were formed due to large numbers of Crips in Compton, California. So. The first blood set that is said to have been founded was the Pyrus, the Compton Pyrus, and that was to combat the, the acts and violent acts from the Compton Crips. Well, there was not many very, there wasn't many Compton Pyrus, so they had to form alliances with other blood sets, such as the Bounty Hunter Bloods, the Denver Lane Bloods, and the LA Brims. Not only are they West Coast, such in California, but the United Blood Nation was formed here on the East Coast in uh, Rikers Island in prison in New York. Um, 
1993, I believe it was July, 1993, Omar, OG Mack, Porti, and Leonard Deadeye McKenzie formed the United Blood Nation. They, they aligned blood sets within inside a prison wall. Um, and they aligned the sex money murder bloods, the non trade gangster bloods, the gangster killer bloods, or the G Shine bloods, or GKB, and the Valentine bloods. The reason for this, and the reason for the most notable issues that they cause law enforcement, once again, is a shock, violence and drugs. So the bloods are as well, have became violent through their actions. They sell drugs to help further their criminal organization. Um, they commit violent acts to, to try to stay supreme. Just a little quick snip here from pictures wise. This is Crip Killer over here in the, the far right, to your left. Um, this is an individual throwing up hand signs of bees for blood. And uh, this is um, the Denver Lane, the Denver Lane sign. So just some pictures from issues that they cause law enforcement, um, just to kind of show that when I say they cause law enforcement problems, these violent acts, these these uh, the drug sales, this is this is the problems here. These are what's renting our community. These are what's causing issues within our community. And as law enforcement, we're having to combat these problems. So if you look here, top corner here with this SWAT vest and this pistol. In this red, this black bandana, this uh, vest was stolen out of a, uh, a an officer's house during a burglary by a gangster disciple. Top middle picture here, it's a search warrant that was conducted. Several guns, stolen firearms, drugs, and money was seized from a Denver Lane Blood trap house. Down here in the middle, a gangster disciple trap house. Several stolen guns, drugs. Bottom, your bottom left, my right, uh, so red bandanas for Denver Lane Bloods, several firearms, uh, another uh, search warrant from a uh, gangster disciple trap house, several uh, pounds of marijuana, crack cocaine, powder cocaine, and firearms were all seized from this residence. And these are the issues that are caused. Now that's just the drug side of it and some of the guns for the violence. But here's just some local stats um, for gangs and the violence aspect and the problems that we face as law enforcement officers and future law enforcement officers face while we're trying to combat these crimes and these individuals that are plaguing the community. Um, and from October 1st, 2018 to July 7th, 2020, there were 192 gang-related shootings, fights, and gun-related incidents just in Anderson County. There were nine reported fights that were proven to be gang-related fights. Um, there's several gangs that currently operate within inside the, the city limits and county limits of Anderson. There's Denver Lane Bloods, Baton River Bloods, Blood Soul, Villain, Sex Money Murder, G-Shine, Nine Trade, so on and so forth. I mean, there's so many. Um, the Crips, the Rolling 60s, insane gangster Crips, Rolling 90s, uh, the Folk Nation groups, that's, your IGD and same gangster disciples and your gangster disciples. Um, out of those shooting incidents, there were numerous homicides. Um, these individuals are not here like they try to portray in some history, try to portray them to be as help for the community and protection for the community against law enforcement and other bad people. They are causing these problems. They are causing major issues here in your own community. And us as law enforcement are trying to combat those problems. And I hope that some of this history that I've given you, some of these instructions, some of the some of the things as far as the violence, the drugs, and the history of these groups will allow you to have a better understanding of criminal street gangs, the gangster disciples, the Crips, and the Bloods. Thank you.